Hello, uh, thank you for watching this video. Today I'm going to instruct you on how to um, set up Holy Communion from Reserve Sacrament to be used in a home. During this uh, time of pandemic, we as Anglicans cannot um, do uh, home communion the way some people and some traditions can, and it largely has to do with what we believe about Holy Communion, that um, it is first and foremost a participation in the very real body and blood of Christ. And it becomes that only when celebrated by an, uh, a properly ordained priest or bishop in a co community of faith. Um, so we can't have a community gathered. And how do we, um, how do we get this, the, uh, the elements out? What we can do and what the bishop has authorized in this circumstance is to, um, to deliver Holy Communion from a reserve sacrament. And so um, I brought together a small congregation um, the, and consecrated uh, a, a mass with copious amounts of elements and placed the extra in reserve. Now these reserve elements can be distributed. And what we do with a reserve element is that we keep it in this right here, it's called a tabernacle. And if I open it up on the inside, you can see that this tabernacle, tabernacle has reserve element in it. Um, in fact, more than typically would be found in there. And so you have a, um, a container here um, that has leftover sacrament in it. And then there is a ciborium that also has more in it. Likewise, we have consecrated wine in this tabernacle. So what I'm going to do and is to take from this reserve sacrament and place it in, um, in kits of sorts and then deliver those to homes of people who wanted it. If you're watching this video, it's because you asked me to deliver to you. So how do you, how do you set up for communion when it comes time uh, for us to have it. And, and I should say here that we're going to have communion together even if we're apart. So on Sunday morning, we'll have morning prayer as we typically do. And morning prayer can be the, um, the precursor, the service of the word before Holy Communion. That's very much an acceptable way to do morning prayer. So we're gonna have morning prayer. And then for those who wish, we will continue on and have a service of Holy Communion. It will not be a full service of communion because these elements have already been consecrated. And part of the liturgy of communion is to consecrate the, the priest places his hands upon the elements and consecrates them. And that's when they become, uh, in, in our theology, the very body and blood of Christ. That's already taken place. So the Sunday liturgy that we'll be participating in, you'll be watching at home on your televisions or computers or whatever device you have, and I will be here in the church celebrating, um, will not include the consecration part. I hope that makes sense. But what it will do is we will have a time where we commune. We begin, we remember the words of Jesus, um, take, eat, this is my body, take, drink, this is my blood, We'll say the Lord's Prayer um, and commune. Uh, this is what we would do if, um, if, for instance, you were ill and I came to visit you and brought communion to your home. So here's, here's the way it's going to work on these Sundays. Everybody's going to get a kit, and you'll recognize it when it comes. It's, they're all going to look the same. It, it comes in this little wine-colored velvet bag, and I want you to have a small glass of water as well. And so I'm gonna set this off to the side for right now as I open up this communion kit. Inside, one of the things you'll see is a white linen cloth. And if you would take that and unfold it and lay it then down on a table or surface and do this before the service begins. So our service begins at, um, at 10 a.m. And hopefully you tune in live and, and are ready to begin at 10 a.m. So at, at 9.55, you're poised and ready before your television. Unlike if you're at church and you come sneaking in the back door, I see you, I know that. Okay, so you're, you're five minutes till 10, you're, you're there and ready. But at, maybe at 
at 10 minutes till 10, you take and you set this up. Linen cloth. Then you remove this tiny little chalice. See this? Isn't that adorable? Little chalice. And you place it down on the linen cloth. And then inside, you'll see a small vial of communion wine. This communion wine has not been consecrated, so um, don't worry about that today. Um, and then you'll have a little tin, looks like this. If you would open up this tin, place the lid right there, and then inside of the tin, you'll see there are small hosts. Set the, the tin off to the side, place how many hosts that you need in the, the lid, the upturn. Then you'll find a medicine dropper. Looks like this. This is for the wine. What you'll do then is take the lid off of the wine, set it aside as you have the other, take the medicine dropper and fill it up, and then place the wine into the mini chalice. Perhaps, depending on how many you are, um, one medicine dropper is more than enough for one person, um, two more than enough for two. Um, I tried this and saw that I could do about five tastings from a full chalice, um, So, which begs the question as to why I'm filling it up so much now. In any event, here you have it, there's the wine. And then if you would take your medicine dropper and just set it off to the side, place your wine over to the side, and recap it so you don't have any danger of spilling any. This is very important that um, it might seem overly pedantic um, to, to be so careful, but because we believe that this is the very body and blood of Christ, it's important that we're very careful with these elements. Uh, hence the need for the medicine dropper. We don't want, we don't want any unnecessary um, uh, spilling of the wine onto anything. And if it is spilled, we have this this linen cloth, and we'll talk more about that in a, in a moment. So there you have it. You have a setup um, of the, the host and the wine. We go through our service, and it comes time to commune. Um, you will take this and, uh, and then consume as you normally would. Um, and in this case, I'm going to. And then take your small chalice. It really is cute. And drink from it. Multiple people in your family, pass it around. Everyone could have, um, take from the wine. When you um, are finished with it, you have it sit at the seat, at, you, you place it back. I don't know why I was thinking it was going to sit. You place it back onto the cloth continue with our prayer of thanksgiving after we receive. Um, there's a blessing and a dismissal. And after this dismissal, now you become part of the altar guild. Okay, and so you'll take um, your medicine dropper again that you just set aside and your glass of water. Taking and putting the lid back on the um, host, sealing it up, making sure that the wine is tightly sealed. Now you take the medicine dropper, you squeeze it and fill it with water. Then you take this water and you place it into the chalice. This way, and then consume this water. This way all of the wine can be um, consumed. There's none, no residual left over in, in the, the, um, the chalice or in the medicine dropper. We've now um, consumed all of it. Then take your chalice and your medicine dropper and go to the sink and with soap and water, clean and wash and dry it. And then having done that, return them to the, um, to the bag. I found it easiest to place this linen cloth in first. And I will say, if you spill wine on this, you simply take it to the sink, um, clean it with soap and water, let it dry, and then return it to the, um, to the kit. Slide those things in. This goes back in. L lastly, the wine goes in. And you can draw the strings tight. 
And then take this and place it in um, whatever safe and sacred spot you have in your home. Um, perhaps uh, if you have a safe, it would be a great place. If you, um, if you have a, a place where you, uh, bookshelves where you keep um, special things or something like that, place this in a, in a safe and sacred spot. And there you have it. That's, um, that is going to be the way in which we receive Holy Communion during this time of um, quarantine, I suppose is what we call it, uh, this time when we cannot gather as a church. I hope this has been helpful to you. If you have questions, feedback, send me an email um, and, or give me a call or whatever, and we'll, we'll talk about it. Until next time, God bless you. Take care.